Here is another question related to cystic fibrosis and the autosomal recessive disorder. It says cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disorder. Charlie has a child with cystic fibrosis from a previous relationship. Jane has a sibling with cystic fibrosis. Neither Charlie nor Jane nor any of their parents have cystic fibrosis. What is the probability that Charlie and Jane will have a child with cystic fibrosis? So this question is basically the same as the question in the previous video, uh, except this time we've been told that Charlie has a child with cystic fibrosis from his previous relationship. That is the only difference in, the, in this question. We're going to approach this question the same way uh, we approached the previous one by making a family tree or a family pedigree to give us uh, a visual on what's going on as to how uh, and where the disease is transmitted down each generation in the family. Let's start with Charlie and his wife Jane. Again, we've been told that Charlie had another relationship prior to his relationship with Jane. And in that previous relationship, he has a child who is inflicted by cystic fibrosis. Now, what does that mean in terms of Charlie's genotype? That means he must have this genotype. Not 50% probability, not 75% probability. It is 100% probability that he has this exact genotype. How is that so? Well, let's say Charlie's genotype is big A and big A. And his previous partner is big A, small a. You can see here that it doesn't make sense that he has a child with cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis requires two defective alleles. In this case, two recessive alleles of the gene for a person to have it. As for Jane, she has this genotype as well uppercase letter A and lowercase letter A. And the probability of her having this genotype is two the probability. Why? For one, we're questioning the probability of her child having cystic fibrosis. So one of the alleles in her genotype must be recessive. Because remember, we're working with an autosomal recessive disorder here. And secondly, we've been told that she doesn't have the disease, so she must carry one dominant allele, which is the uppercase letter A. Lastly, the reason we know it's possible for Jane to have the lowercase letter A is because she has a sibling with the disease, which tells us about their parents. Both of them must be carriers. And as a consequence, Jane is able to have the lowercase letter A in her genotype. The next step is to take Charlie's genotype and Jane's genotype and do a cross between them because we're trying to figure out the chances of their child being infected by the disease, right? So this is Charlie. This is Jane. So after doing the cross, we can see that there is one in four chances that their child is going to have the disease. Now in the next step, we're going to use a little bit of math. We're going to use something called the product law. Where we take the probability of Jane having this genotype, the probability of the child having this genotype, and multiply them together. We get 2 over 12, which can be reduced to 1 over 6. 1 over 6 is the probability of Charlie and Jane having a child with cystic fibrosis.